Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Facebook Live. My name is Andy. I'm one of the trainers here in the Cat Ambassador Program, and I'm here with one of our famous ambassadors. Her name is Chris. She is uh, about eight months old now, and she is training to become an ambassador cheetah in our program here at the zoo. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about her, about her backstory, how she ended up here as an ambassador trainer, and we're going to maybe meet some cool friends along the way as we go uh, throughout this little adventure in our home safari. So thank you so much for tuning in and for joining us. We're going to leave some time uh, for some questions for you guys, so please put questions in if you have any questions about Chris, about what's happening here at the zoo with us. Um, but we'll go ahead and talk a little bit about her. So Chris was born at our off-site breeding facility. It is up in Mason. It's about a half hour away from our main zoo campus here. Now she was the only surviving cub from her litter, and when that happens, a mom cheetah will not raise a solo cub by herself. This happens in their natural range, but it also happens at zoos. And so when that happens at a zoo, we want to make sure that we can still ensure that cub survival. These guys are an endangered species, so every cheetah, oh yeah, it's a good scratch spot. <laughs> every cheetah is critical to their survival. And when we have a solo cub like that born, we're able to hand raise them, and they can become ambassadors as part of our cat ambassador program here at the zoo. So what it means to be an ambassador is she's able to do educational programs just like this, where she's up on the table uh, talking to, well, she's not doing the talking, it's usually one of us doing the talking, <laughs> guests, and uh, she'll go to schools, visit kids uh, in their gymnasiums, do educational programs, and it really makes a difference when people are able to visit with a cheetah and see them and realize that these are really amazing cats that should be conserved and should be saved. Aside from that, she also will be part of our running program here at the zoo. We have a football field sized running yard where Chris is slowly learning how to become a runner in our running program. I actually just wrote a blog about her training up to this point, so if you guys need some extra reading uh, while we're all stuck at home during this time, you can go ahead and check that out. That is linked as well on the zoo's uh, Facebook page for this home safari. Now something else that's really cool about Chris is her personality. So Chris is a really fun cheetah to work with. She is very brave when it comes to cheetahs. Cheetahs are not typically uh, the bravest cats. They're typically scaredy cats. But Chris, she loves all new situations and environments. So if you guys stay tuned till the end of this video, we might have a very first thing for Chris that we are saving for you guys to experience with us here today at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that as well. Now, a lot of you have been asking what you can do to help the zoo during this time. We are closed to the public. So we are not getting our normal revenue stream that we would this time of year. So something you can do that will really help is to donate to the amazing care that we still have to give to all our animals every single day. And you can go ahead and click on this post here. There is a donate button. And if you could share as well, that would help us to help with all our animal care and the great conservation work that we do with them as well. All right, Chris is gonna keep exploring around here. But you know, there's something that's really cool about ambassador cheetahs that you may have noticed or seen before online. And sometimes they get a fun little companion to grow up with. And having a companion is really essential. Since Chris didn't have any of those cheetah siblings to grow up with, we got her a little friend to grow up with. So let's see if he wants to come make an appearance here for you. This is Remus. This is Chris's puppy companion. Remus is almost a year old. He came to us from the Animal Rescue Fund, a local shelter. And we're gonna watch him play for a little bit. Get excited. While we're watching watch him play, uh, several people have asked why Chris has uh, spots and also why she has stripes on her heels. Yeah, so those spots are really important to help cheetahs 
to camouflage. It might not seem like that in this environment where we are indoors because it's a little chilly outside for us, but on the African savanna, those spots help to break up her silhouette so that she can hide in those grasses. Cheetahs can have upwards of two to 3,000 spots. And what's also really cool about their spots and their tail pattern is that is unique to each individual cheetah. So just like we have a unique thumbprint that defines us, each cheetah has a unique spot pattern. So that's one way that researchers are able to tell cheetahs apart when they are studying them on the African savanna by looking at those spot patterns. There's a lot of cool things that make cheetahs unique as well, aside from their spot patterns. One thing that you will notice, and it's a way you can tell all cheetahs apart from other cat species, is the malar stripes they have on their face. Those are those big black lines that go from their eyes down towards their mouths, and those help them to hunt during the daytime. Cheetahs are hunting during the day, unlike a lot of cat species, so they need those stripes to help absorb the sun's rays so that they can see better when they are hunting. Cheetahs have excellent sense of vision. They can see for up to three miles in perfect detail. That would be like if we were standing on a beach and looking down, we could see individual grains of sand. That's how amazing their vision is. So what a cheetah is going to do is they're going to use that vision to find their prey. They're going to be hunting things that are about 40 pounds or less. Things like impala, maybe some small gazelle, maybe some other baby and smaller animals that they can hunt. But when things are smaller, they tend to also be quicker. Now, that's why cheetahs have to be so fast, is because their food is fast. It's not like we humans have to be particularly fast to, say, catch a pizza pizza, right? Now, these guys, if they're hunting really fast impala, they have to be able to catch it. So they have a ton of unique adaptations that allow them to be skilled runners. Cheetahs can run up to 70 miles per hour, which is the fastest animal on land. They can even go zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds, which is faster than most sports cars. Now, something that's really cool about cheetahs, aside from their incredible speed, is if you look at their tail. So they have a very long tail, but their tails, they are flat. They're not flat like a pancake though. They are flat on the sides. So if you, oh, look, you got a great look of it right there. So if you look at that tail, it actually helps them to make sharp turns when they're chasing after prey, just like she's doing right now as she's playing with Linda with that toy. She uses that tail to help her keep her balance as she's running around. That's one unique thing about them. You'll also notice, if you look at her paws right now, she's laying there on the ground, her nails are out. So most cats have what we call retractable claws, right? Their nails are gonna be able to come in and out as they need to use them, like when they're climbing, like just like your house cats at home have. But cheetahs, their nails are always out. That's because they act like they're built in running cleats. So at any point in time, they are ready to run and get started. So a lot of you are probably wondering why there's a puppy in here. We kind of introduced him a little bit earlier. His name is Remus. He is uh, almost one year old. He will be one year sometime in April. We're not exactly sure when his birthday is um, because we did get him from a rescue. So we got him from uh, the local animal rescue fund, which is out in Amelia Township. And we were really looking for a dog that would be a great companion for Cheetah Chris here. So we wanted a dog that had a great personality. We didn't want one that was maybe too aggressive. We didn't want one that would maybe just lay around all the time. We wanted a dog that would play, that would engage with Chris, just like her siblings would engage with her if she had had siblings. And so that's where Remus came in. We met with a lot of puppies um, at the shelter when we were trying to pick which one would be perfect for Chris's companion. And Remus stuck out to us right away. I mean, he's obviously adorable, so that helped, but he just has always had the best personality. And we're really, really proud of how he's matured into an ambassador for cheetahs, but also for dogs worldwide. He's a great dog and is doing a great job here as cheetah's companion and friend. Now, not to worry though, these guys a lot of times will get asked, well, isn't Chris gonna chase him and do 
when the, what happens when they get older? Well, these guys, it's they're siblings. They grew up together, so that's kind of how they see each other as siblings. They met when they were really little, and it did take some time for them to get to know each other and be comfortable like they are today. But it's just like your siblings that you have at home. You know, you love them and you like growing up with them, but maybe eventually you don't want to share a room with them anymore, right? <laughs> so eventually we all grow up a little bit and want to move on. And cheetahs, they naturally will separate from their siblings and their mom uh, when they're about two years old. So that is typically when we will see the separation between Chris and Remus. And that's also what we've seen with a lot of our other cheetah dogs that we've had in the past here at the Cincinnati Zoo. Chris and Remus are our seventh cheetah dog pair. So we have had a bunch of dogs here to help be that sibling for our ambassador cheetahs. Maybe if you guys have been around the zoo before and you've seen the cheetah encounter before, you have seen our other cheetah dog. His name is Moose. He just turned four years old last week with his four-year-old cheetah named Donnie. So those two are still hanging out together. Occasionally you will see um, cheetah dogs, they get to decide how long they want to be with their cheetahs. So those two still hang out and have fun. Um, but it also is partly due to the fact that Donnie is a boy cheetah and Chris here is a girl cheetah. So boy cheetahs will sometimes stay with their brothers throughout their entire lives. And when they do that, they form what we call a coalition. So that's what you call a group of cheetahs. So sometimes uh, male cheetahs will stay together, but females are pretty much always going to separate on their own and live a solitary lifestyle like a lot of other cat species. Two so, questions okay. before we uh, head in yeah. the other direction. Um, do cheetahs swim, and what is the white spot at the end of the tail for? Okay, so the white spot at the end of the tail, that's just part of her coloration. Um, so it changes. Uh, some cheetahs don't even have any white at the end of their tail. Some of them have a lot. You know, just like we have different hair, hair color as humans, um, cheetahs can have different spot patterns and tail patterns. So that's just unique to Chris, that little white tip at the end of her tail. And cheetahs can swim. They are not fans of it, though, just like most cat species who don't enjoy swimming. Remus here, on the other hand, loves swimming. We do have a pond up at our cheetah encounter running yard, and he loves swimming in that pond. Now, I don't know if any of you guys noticed this earlier when I was down here, but I have a pretty cool shirt on. Uh, this is Chris and Remus, a local t-shirt company called Cincy Shirts, uh, made this design uh, about the best friends and about the... <laughs> dynamic duo. And if you guys want to get this shirt, you can actually head to the Cincinnati Zoo's website and we have a bunch of really cool zoo merchandise on there that you guys can get and all those proceeds will help the zoo as well. Do we have any other questions before we go on our next adventure? Um, how well do they hear? Cheetahs. How well do they hear? You know, hearing is not their uh, best sense. I would say that is definitely eyesight. They can hear pretty well though. They're gonna use that eyesight, like I said, to get as close as they can to the prey. So they can see for up to three miles. They like being really high because that increases the distance that they can see. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna try to get as close as they possibly can to that prey before they break into their sprint. Because cheetahs, while they are remarkably fast runners, they can only run that fast for about a minute. So if they did not get close enough to their prey in order to catch it in that one minute, then they're gonna have to go and rest and wait probably another few hours before they can build up the energy to do that sprint again. So these guys, they are not marathon runners at all, but expert sprinters. Greer from Illinois wants to know if cheetahs like catnip. Do cheetahs like catnip? You know, um, some of them, but most of our cheetahs are not too big of fans of it. I mean, I don't say they don't like it, they just don't really engage with it like your house cats at home do. Um, we have a lot of really great enrichments that we do for our animals here at the zoo, and the best enrichment that we have for our cheetahs is running them um, in our running yard and on our lure machine, which is really amazing if you have not seen it yet. Definitely have to come and check us out at the Cheetah Encounter. We're one of the only zoos in the country that has cheetahs running in a fashion like that. And we are also one of the first ones that figured out how to do it. So 
It's really cool here at Cincinnati. We have 10 ambassador cheetahs, including Chris here today, uh, that are part of that program. So come check us out if you haven't seen it yet. And one of the other really cool enrichment things that we're gonna do here, is we're gonna go take Chris on a walk with her buddy, Renus. So uh, our ambassador cheetahs are trained to uh, walk on a leash, uh, and it's really fun for them because that's some great enrichment. Like I said, these guys are very visual um, animals. They love seeing things. That's the best way to enrich cheetahs. One of the most creative things we've done to enrich our cheetahs is uh, put like a big television outside of their houses. They actually like watching TV, <laughs> which is pretty fun. But that's what they really love is being able to see and use that amazing vision. So we're going to go ahead as uh, we get some more of your guys' questions in here. Um, but before we do that, we do have a fun activity for all you guys at home. If you want to do something fun and have fun craft with Chris and Remus, we want you guys to get creative and use recycled material, materials to make your own Chris and Remus. So the best suggestion I can give you guys is using something like an old uh, paper towel tube or toilet paper roll and make that in a fashion it in a way that it looks like Chris or Remus. Maybe get some paint, some markers. Um, use your creativity and see what you guys can make and make the dynamic duo. And maybe see what the differences are between Remus here and Chris. Maybe one of them is going to have more spots than the other. We really want to see what you guys have and what you can bring, so please tag us if you uh, complete your creations. Tag us here at the Cincinnati Zoo uh, so we can see that and share it on our social pages as well. All right, we're going to go ahead and get ready, and we're going to take these guys on a walk around the zoo. Yes, You want to catch? Yay! Sure. We're heading out. <laughs> now this is, like I said, this is a first for them. So this is the first time Chris has been able to walk in the zoo. This is something that we can do uh, because there's nobody else here, right? So it's a unique opportunity for our animals to explore something new and different. Sure, the statue. Looks like the, the actual lions are on this side. That would be a little too scary. season. <laughs> Don't worry. As soon as we get back up, we'll be doing some cheetah encounters here. Now, Chris, she has started uh, learning how to run in our running yard. Uh, we did have some a uh, few nice days of weather a few weeks ago, so we got her outside and running on our lure. Uh, if you head to uh, the Zoo's website, uh, there is a video of her first run on there. You can see how she did. She did pretty great. Um, and she'll hopefully be running in our team encounter uh, by the end of the summer, at least. It is a pretty big field. Like I said, it's about the size of a football field. So she has to, <laughs> she has to build up that stamina and energy first before she 
be able to run that full distance. So that's part of why Remus is also really important. He allows her to play, and they run together in the yard um, to help her build up that energy and stamina. <laughs> this is our really awesome new renovated lion exhibit. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it yet, there's also a video of that on the social media pages to check out.